Hi and welcome back to Trendgruppen Design TV. Today we have a full program with interesting people and exquisite design. So join us for this whole 15 minutes. First off, we're going to talk to Danish design company Montana. And they've sent us some of their new launched pieces here to the studio. So let's see if we can have a look at it. And next up, we have the opportunity to talk to Joachim Lassen, owner and designer at Montana Furniture. Tell us a little bit more about the new parts of Montana Mini. Right now, we are introducing a new pro product within uh, the Montana Mini. Uh, we do uh, add on a, uh, a unit uh, with, uh, with drawers, uh, other one, two or three doors, drawers, uh, and we also add some uh, other elements uh, in terms of a mirror, uh, a round mirror, a, a squared mirror, and, uh, and also a notice board. We're going through difficult and changing times with the pandemic, for instance. What kind of colors do we need now? I think colors, I think in the situation we are in now uh, with the, the pandemic, uh, I think uh, there's a need of colors uh, because we need to have optimism in our life and I think uh, by having uh, colors in our homes and uh, uh, on our furniture, on our walls, I think that's the way, one of the way uh, to, uh, to put in a little optimism uh, in, in the daily life during the pandemic. And also, do you see any new furniture that we will need? I think uh, the pandemic um, have learned us uh, a quite a few things. We have been very much at home uh, and uh, we have, uh, I think a lot of people have making order in their, uh, in, in all their rooms and in, in all their uh, belongings at home. And I think, uh, and a thing you need, uh, and, and we can also see that on our selling, is actually you need storage to organize uh, your your way of living, and uh, and I do also think that you need a, a big uh, part of flexibility uh, in 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 the furniture uh, that you buy, so that you are not closed down in in one solution, but uh, you actually you buy something that you can use in in many different ways. I think what is important right now um, is that. The furniture we, we do uh, get into our house is flexible, uh, that we are able to use it in, in many different ways. Um, you shouldn't be static in what you buy, but uh, when you buy, and for example, when you buy Montana, you, you, also, you buy into a system of furniture that actually gives you the possibility of buying two or three units you can put them in a row or you can put them uh, on top of each other and by that giving, uh, giving you uh, flexibility in, in how you are building up your home. Thank you Joachim Lassen and I look forward to see you live next time. We're continuing this show with more Scandinavian design, this time from Finland. And we're going to talk to Ville Kokonen and Florencia Colombo about their exhibition about the history of Itala. Hi Ville, hi Florencia, happy design week. Itala is celebrating its 140 year anniversary and you are taking care of their celebration basically. So you're doing an exhibition at the Helsinki Design Museum that's opening in March. Can yes. you tell me, can you introduce them? What's, what's the exhibition about? What are you doing? Well, the exhibition will be called uh, Kaleidoscope as main title, and we have a subtitle from Nature to Culture. We are looking at the history of Itala. Uh, 140 years is not uh, a small portion of time, but we're looking at it from a non-linear perspective. So basically, uh, the exhibition will combine elements uh, from different temporal periods and will be analyzed through a series of 30 sub-themes, like 30 filters. So it basically is a collection of short stories that together compose the core, the essence of what Itala today stands for. 
I don't know if this uh, explains a little bit. No, but we can no. I think that. so. I mean, you have a. Um, I mean, I, I also read online about the exhibition, and there's like a lot of research behind this, and there's like lots of objects. But can you tell me about? You said that there's filters. Can you give an example of a filter? Yeah, it's one filter. For example, we have five main themes. So the subtitle from nature to culture. Basically, we start from the core of what glass is. You know, sand. So uh, nature is a. Very important element throughout Italy's history, not just from its material resource, but also through the inspiration. You know this Nordic uh, supernatural element that exists in many of the artworks and uh, let's say inspirations of, of the designers from the past and also the present. So nature will be a very strong element throughout the exhibition, but not just in terms of like an inspirational theme, but also in terms of a question of uh, environment, responsibility, resources, and many themes that we're all occupied today as well, in terms of uh, the circular economy, etc. Um, taking into advantage now that Itala is producing recycled glass elements, as well as uh, now having the new vintage project in which they're receiving, uh, let's say, secondhand objects from their audiences and reselling them through their uh, shop outlets. One another element is uh, the title Kaleidoscope. Uh, the reason why this exhibition will be quite special is also the Design Museum's archive is quite vast and we are lucky enough to have several examples of many of the key works. So unlike other exhibitions where you might only see one object uh, only once, uh, as a kaleidoscope works the themes will repeat certain key items, but just present them under different filters, under different constellations. So the exhibition will really work as a beautiful network of content, uh, constantly mixing the old with the new, and also showing that certain core historical values are still very much present. Um, and the other aspect is kaleidoscope means beautiful form. So this is actually also uh, the essence of the project, uh, we're introducing the concept of magic realism, uh, but analyzed from the point of view of design and just delving into the supernatural quality that exists within the history of Itala uh, from the aspect of glass making, uh, which the glass blowers themselves still say that there's an element of magic in it, uh, from the feeling that the designers have towards the history of Itala and towards the materiality itself, which is, you know, so fluid, so so formless that it has this sort of uh, almost uh, infinite possibility of transforming into different shapes and functions. Wonderful. It's, it sounds like a beautiful exhibition with all these perspectives of things. Did, are there any key pieces that you found that you're really proud of, of displaying? Um, I don't know if it's certain key pieces. What we will be doing is uh, bringing out certain designers that perhaps in the recent decades or throughout the history has, of how it has been told up to now, has not been looked up like uh, Gunnar Luhmann, for example. She was one of the first uh, to be part of, of Itala's uh, works and many of designers referred to her artworks as key references of how to work with glass. Mm. Um, another okay. aspect is uh, bringing, um, I mean, we're looking at Itala not just as a brand, but also as a factory because it has a very intricate history, both as a brand and factory because of the different mergers that existed, also with Swedish, many Swedish brands. Um, so, for example, the whole era of Karhula Itala is quite important from which we know, basically, I know Alvarado's work but also others such as Udyo Rosola or Joran Joran um, oh, no. uh, their work are equally fantastic, and we'll be bringing them to light. Mm -hmm. and, and the relationship with current works as well. I mean, there are so many interesting dialogues that have not been seen up to now. Yeah, but but also, um, uh, of course, Italy is really known for its glass works. But we try to also bring, you know, they have done lots of steel items. Uh, Part of it lies is now ceramics as well. They use wood, um, but as, as Flores had mentioned, um, 
uh, aside your question regarding the highlights, of course, there are the, the famous Altavas and the Altos together, what they did, and then the key well-known designers. We really try to also bring forth um, some prototypes that perhaps have never been uh, launched or, or visible, of course, within the limitations that we can show. And also projects, for example, this relations and tools project that not many of the items are in production but anymore, but we're bringing them again to, to showcase that what projects um, ETA has done over, over the last few years. Interesting. Um, besides the exhibition, you're also doing a book now with Badon. How's that going? Is that going to be launched this year or later? Yes, this is already completed and it will be coming out quite soon. Um, it's already available for pre-order. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if you're interested, yeah. You I'll place my order, don't worry. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yes, both projects were developed in, in sync. Uh, of course, there are many differences because of the format and the final media is a different way of expressing the concept, but um, it is quite an encyclopedic uh, perspective of Itala's history. Uh, it's also very poetic as well, uh, which is uh, like a essential part of Itala. Um, but uh, they will complement each other very nicely, uh, the book and the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And of course the book um, exhibitions should often show, show what's happening right now. They're very temporary in that sense, although this is a traveling exhibition, but books last forever. They really, they, you know, it's 40 years, a short lifetime for a book. So, and Itala, there hasn't been a really big publication of Itala for quite some years. So this was, it was quite a challenging task and also a super, super quick project. We, we started working on this uh, not that long time ago. So it's, we, been, it's been very intense. Yeah. And the book is quite inclusive as well. So um, we aimed at different types of audiences, those who know Itala and those who don't, those who are just maybe interested in Nordic design um, or glass or craftsmanship. So uh, the book is quite complete in this sense. It offers uh, several different perspectives. Well, thank you both. Um, very interesting. And I look forward to see uh, the exhibition when the corona and the pandemic is over, so you can actually travel and see the exhibitions. But until then, I can at least read the book, I guess. Um, thanks for taking your time to talk to us. And um, I'm just ending this uh, interview by saying, Ki <laughs> Oh, no, Great. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> We're now going to be talking about this. This new feature, this new sofa and armchair by Matti Klenell for Swedish design company Ofekt. And they have sent us a film to watch, so enjoy! Hey! Hey! Kolla där! Ja! Vilken dramatisk entré! Ja. <laughs> Silverflor! Mm. Mm -hmm. Nu skulle vi få se hur det blev. Så här gör vi på effekt mm. när formgivarna ska titta för första gången på, på prov. Wow. Man måste nästan ta en bild på den innan va? Ja. Vad spännande. Att effekt eh, jobbar med Matti Klinell eh, är en självklarhet. Eh, han har ett eget uttryck. Och det är viktigt att ha det om man vill jobba med effekt och att vi väljer dem. Att våga ha ett eget uttryck som gör att man inte hänger på en trend eller, utan man har en idé om det man vill göra och att det syns igenom. Det är intressant. Ja, men det första var ju för Nationalmuseum det här raka, enkla, nästan larvigt enkla <laughs> bänken på något vis. Liksom, som det var svårt att reducera mer. Man... Så sen ledde det där vidare till en rundad variant som ser ut på det här sättet. En halvcirkel. För lite mer liksom socialiserande som går att ställa ihop i en hel cirkel och sitta kring. Och efter det så har det liksom fortsatt med liksom att man testar möjligheterna för, 
för den här modellen. Alltså rummet, sammanhanget, det är ju det som tycker jag gör att en möbel blir giltig. Alltså, eller ett dricksglas eller vad det är nu man jobbar med. Det är ju mötet med någon som, som det du gör får en relevans kan jag tycka. Det kan ju handla om avskildhet, alltså att du, du, att, att du väljer att vända folk ifrån varandra eller vända folk emot varandra. Men du är ju som arkitekt eller formgivare med att regissera eller styra ett rumsligt sammanhang. Jag, jag tycker människan är jätteviktig att liksom ha med och en, någon sorts inre idé om, om vem det är som använder det. På skissbordet så sitter jag väldigt ofta och liksom resonerar kring det sociala sammanhanget, det föremålet som jag har fått i uppgift att jobba med ska finnas och vara. Jag tycker att det är därifrån man går ner till någonting som till slut blir en, en möbel. Ja. Var det champagne? <laughs> Titta. Ja. Åh oh, la kolla. Det är otroligt fint. Mm. <laughs> oj, oj, oj. Oj, oj, oj. Roligt. Nej, men jättekul. Jag vill sitta med en gång, tror jag. Mm. Mm. Man sitter faktiskt väldigt bra i den. Mm. Have you missed an episode or want to re-watch one? Don't forget you can always go to trendgruppendesigntv.com and find all the shows that we've made there. Also on the same site you'll find high resolution images, press releases and all the necessary information you'll need to make your Stockholm Design Week successful.